and welcome back. So today I'm going to be talking about GCSE biology and how you can maximise your grade in this subject which requires a lot of precision and a lot of knowing exactly what the examiners want. Just like A-level chemistry and GCSE chemistry have become even more similar, GCSE biology has taken on some things from A-level chemistry just you know to make it harder for us and also so that whenever we do go on to do biology A level, if you choose that, it will be slightly easier. For example, the whole thing about kidneys has been moved from A2, which means that we will have done most of that by the time we get to A2, which is good in a way, but also, like I said in the chemistry video, it's not good if you're going to give it biology up because it is difficult. So that means that you need to know all the details of these things that usually don't even get tested until A level for your GCSE. So I'm going to show you some of the tips and tricks I have for note making, note taking for biology. So note wise from biology, I, unlike chemistry, did not use the textbook. I used my class notes from biology because they were pretty good and I did like how they were laid out. I did sometimes change the order of them, that was just my personal preference. So what I would do is I would take my class notes, which were usually paragraphs and some fill in the blanks and some writing things down, writing definitions and stuff, and I would convert them into bulleted lists or numbered lists in order of how the things in biology happen or like different things. For example, what is water used for in plants? I would have my definitions or my all my answers bullet pointed across my page, just made it easy for me to see. For example, here we have how does DNA work, which was just a section in my book which I converted to this bullet pointed list which kind of just lies out in order what happens for DNA to be processed in your body. Same with cell division, I had two main bullet points and two numbered lists, which just lays things out a lot easier for me to see so that I can read it much clearer and learn the points in order much quicker. Biology diagrams were extremely important. I really found diagrams helpful to see how things worked and even just to get my head around some of the places and you have to label them in the exam sometimes. So that all, diagrams were a key part of my notes, just so I could see what was happening and so that I got in my head exactly how things looked. So here we have a neuron from unit one, which I just labeled for things that we need to know for the exam. As you can see, I still have my numbered lists. Another diagram there of the like, neuron pathway. And over here I have the reflex arc all laid out and a diagram of a synapse, which this series of events here was one of the things that I drilled into my head. Sadly, it did not come up in the exam, which really annoyed me, but these things do happen. I also really like these drawings of kidneys I did. I think they're some of them maybe my best drawings. In biology, there does tend to be a lot of information that you need to condense into smaller points so that you can get it into your head for the exam, because in the exam, they could ask you anything, and there is so much covered in that small textbook that you need to get inside your head. In biology, there are lots of processes and things that you need to get in order. For example, how the signal travels across the synapse, or for example, how breathing works. Yeah. Chest goes up, oh, volume increases, pressure decreases, and so wider and so wider. And so you need to write them out. I What I did was I would just write them out and write them out until they were stuck in my head, and then I'd say them over and over and over again. And then it is stuck in your head whenever it came to the exam. Our last question in unit two was the evolution essay, with you know, natural selection based on colours of mice and whatever. I can't remember what animals, but it was something like that. And I had an answer in my head because I'd done some questions similar to that before. And I had wrote out and wrote out the things that the CA want you to know. So for biology, I found answers to be extremely specific. They asked for very specific things a lot of the time in past papers. For example, enzymes, you don't always think to say that enzymes follow the lock and key hypothesis or enzymes are very specific and only combine with or react with a very small range of substrates. That was something that I never fully realised until closer to the exams when I was doing past paper after past paper after past paper. I realised that you do need to get all the small facts of information in there and say so do make sure you have all of them in to get the available marks. Sometimes if it's a six mark question, you need 12 points, which is quite, that's insane. However, that's just the way say so do it. So if you look at the mark schemes and look for the things that come up over and over and over again in the mark schemes, you need to put those in because those are the things that say so are gonna look for that not everyone's gonna put in. If you don't think of it, most other people probably won't think of it either. The thing that really helped me compress my notes from the massive amount of notes that there was in this book was to make these things called micro boosters 
Like basically, you know, the massive posters about this size, size of my face, bigger than my face. Those for biology, I did the I did do them and I'll show you those in a minute. However, micro posters for me were a great way of compressing small chunks of information into small areas so that I could quickly look over a topic in small sections. So here is a micro poster I've made for gas exchange. It, as you can see, there's lots of words, but it's all shorthand and it looks nice. One of the key things I wanted to do when making micro posters was make them look enjoyable so that you don't think you're being forced to look at just pen and paper. As you, these, the, as you can see, the, these ones have a lot of a lot of words, some shorthand I've done. And then this one is one of my favorite drawings I did in all of my micro posters, my alveolus. It's just a diagram of how it operates, how it works in a very clear way so that you can see easily what is happening. As you can see, I also have some here for osmosis, which just kind of shows the different processes in osmosis and has some nice diagrams which help you to take it in easier. As you see, I can I made so many micro posters on various topics in biology. I've got mitosis, breathing. The whole course almost is summarised in these small pieces of paper, which are very easy to make. It's literally just fold up paper and rip it into eighths. As well as micro posters, I also made posters for biology. These were similar to the chemistry ones, but they were more detailed because there is more detail to put in a poster in biology really than there is in chemistry. As the information in chemistry, there's too much to fit almost in biology, there's just enough. So I'm going to show you some of my posters, just like summary posters of the topics in biology. I did do one per topic and if I thought I wasn't going to have enough room, I would draw a massive diagram. So yeah, I'll show you those now. So here you can see my massive poster for co coordination and control in biology. So I went through the subheadings in my school class notes and I would put them into very, very, very brief like bits of information that I was able to write down in Sharpie. As you know from using Sharpies, you cannot write very small with Sharpies. I used smaller pens for some of the smaller details here. But it meant that you could fit some information on the page, which would be very useful going over just before the exam to get to make sure you know everything from each topic. Sometimes the full double page wasn't large enough or was too large for all the things you needed. For example, the foods section of biology isn't big, so I was able to just put all the information in one page. As you saw, that was just kind of the notes I'd done, the posters I'd done for biology, just so I was able to get it all into one page. I was able to see it all a lot clearer. And just as I said, along with chemistry, I did also use the biology my revision guide. I'll find it here. This biology revision guide, just to help me with biology. Just it, the these books are really good. I never actually got the biology textbook. I fully used this book because it was just enough information to get me through. Biology was my, actually my worst science at GCSE, but I enjoyed it so much more than physics. However, I am so happy with the progress I I had come on because. In fourth year, my biology was, and third year, and even below, my biology was nowhere near the standard of my chemistry and physics, even though I don't like physics. So these tips really helped me to get biology into my head and helped me even choose it for A-level, which is something I hadn't considered doing back in first year and second year when biology was really not anywhere near close to my best subject. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video on how to do the best you can in biology, my tips and tricks. And if you want to, if you want any more videos, you can request them down in the comments below. I'd be happy to hear your requests and have a good day. See you. Bye.